This afternoon we're at Hewenden for the Scottish Hydroelectric Premier 3 match between Hillhead, Jordan Hill and Irvine. We had planned to bring you the match between Kelso and Dundee, leaders in Premier 2, but the Pointer Park pitch was declared unplayable at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning. But nevertheless, we've got a fascinating game here because Hills are lying second in the table, Irvine fighting against relegation down at the bottom, and early on, the pressure was on Irvine, the pressure was on scrum half Paul Johnson, Kelly McCulloch hacking it through, Lance Elric making a bit of a girdle of it, and McCulloch getting the touchdown. Elric was one of those who suffered from hypothermia a couple of weeks ago, maybe he's still suffering the effects, but Gus Twaddle, no problem with that conversion, and Hills taking a seven points to no lead after only four minutes. Leap there at the bank by Stuart Rose, and McCulloch setting it up for his midfield, Robbie Williamson taken out by Rishi Philander. David Armstrong to McCulloch. McCulloch, oh, a terrific bust there by Nick McCauley. And Hills keeping the ball alive, getting very close to the urban line. Urban defence in a wee bit of disarray here. Twaddle at standoff and pops it up to Dougie Walker. Whoa, a big man thundering on there, but that pass went forward. Luckily for Irvin, because Hill's looking very dangerous. Irvin survived without giving away another score, though, but then Hill's pinching that scrappy ball at the line out and prepared to give the ball plenty of air again. And woof, look at the power of that run there by Ali Jamison. Uh, taken out there as he chipped ahead, and although Dougie Wood was on the follow-up, Hills took the quick throw, but no, bank for the penalties, the referee Johan van der Merwe, and Gus Twaddle, no problem with a conversion to take it to 10 points to nil, coming up to half-time. I tell you, see Hugh and then see sophisticated scoreboards, eh? And into the second half, and Hills straight into... The Urban 22 plowing on there and watch that number seven. That's Stuart Ross, the Hills captain. He's got the ball at the back and there's nobody guarding that fringe and off he goes and wham over the line for a try down the blind side that Urban will kick themselves for giving away. The Hills skipper taking his team to 15 points to nil ahead after 42 minutes. Restart there taken by Stuart Rose and the Hills Pack again getting a wee bit of momentum and a lot of it coming from that big man Dougie Walker my goodness he takes a bit of stopping up to the urban 10 metre line and penalty yeah not rolling away said referee van der Merwe and well that was a long one for Gus Twirl but it dropped over the bar from all of 40 metres out Taking Hills into an 18 points to no lead. Irvin were going to have to do something pronto if they were going to get anywhere near staying in this game, but it looked as though with the sort of momentum they'd built up that Hills were going to increase that lead. Ed Ryder driving into that one, but taken out by Morney Stridom and the ball coming back on the Irvin side, popped up there by Paul Johnson, worked out to winger Kevin Lang by Mark Kenny. Kenny supporting him on the inside, and whoa, what a try off his left foot, leaving Twaddle for dead, picking up a beautiful angle and straight in under the posts. That was a cracker by the urban centre. Sean Christie, no problem with the conversion, and Irvin on the board with just under half an hour to go. They really couldn't get out of their own half, though, and forced onto the back foot far too often by offensive defence by Hillhead, and a lot of their Afrikaans codes that the Irvin boys use were of no avail today because referee Mr Johan van der Merwe would understand every single word they said. So they didn't get away with anything. They didn't get away with that pass either. It was intercepted by Ali Jemison. Popped up to Cammy McCullough. McCullough goes to ground. Jemison there to take the return pass. But oh, just a foot in touch. Denying the winger what would have been a super try. Hills 
Kept up the pressure though again. Pinching the ball at the line out. Scrappy ball from Irvin. And back on the hill's side. Set up there by Michael Martin bringing some order to the proceedings. Worked out to McCulloch. McCulloch out to David Patterson. Lovely wee chip ahead. But this time it was Morney Stridham who is the man who denied Robbie Williamson the touchdown. Number eight, Rishi Philander, making the hard yards for Irvin, but losing the ball, knocked downfield by Ali Jemison. Back goes Sean Christie, but Hills arrive in numbers before the Irvin defence can get there, and almost inevitably, Christie penalised for holding on, and Gus Twiddle, well, that was near enough for him almost to hit it into Huendon Terrace. Irvin... Well, they weren't going to give up that easily. There's something in the game for them, maybe yet. And Alistair Spice popping that one up to Morph Mahoney. Now, there's a man that increases the average age of the Irvin side by about 12 years all on his own. But Irvin, again, losing the ball at the breakdown. And that really is the story of Irvin's afternoon. As soon as they get a wee bit of momentum going... The errors have crept in. The ball's been given away, and just as Hills did here, they put Irvin onto the back foot, cleared the danger, and looked very, very comfortable as the clock ran down. Pick up there at the back by Michael Martin. Taken on by Stuart Rose, Ian Graham. Thumping in there. Give him that extra wee nudge. Get it out. And it is Nick McCauley. And I tell you what, this Hills pack have got a couple of pretty mobile props. Walker and McCauley have been carried for a fair few yards this afternoon. Whoops. And oh, Brian Hills. Wasn't he me, ref? I it was. Penalty, Hills. Thanks very much to Twaddle. That kick taking the Hills full back to a total of 14 points out of their 24. Clock running down. And referee Van der Merwe looks at his watch. Final stoppage, full time. Delighted with the victory and that we, we deserved the win eventually. We played uh, a lot of ball down there in the first half and didn't get the points, so... Uh, but we got it in the second half, so yeah, we're very happy with the victory against a stuffy Arvin team as we expected. So, Hillhead Jordan Hill stays second in Premier Division 3. Irvin still toiling a bit at the bottom, but Hills can look forward to an exciting run in as a challenge for one of the promotion spots to Premier Division 2. This is Ron Evans for Scottish Rugby Television at Hewenden.